For everyone that's been grinding away in the dark zone to get that rank 50 and buy those high-end blueprints, I want to give you a warning. Don't do it! Those blueprints that are sold in the dark zone may at first glance look like the best things in the game. But if you're looking to get your character the strongest that he can possibly get, then you will be wasting your time and more importantly, you will be wasting your valuable high-end crafting materials. So what is the best way to go about maxing out your character? Well, let's begin. The level cap for your character is 30 in the division, but did you know that there are items in the game that are higher than that? They are level 31. The difference between level 30 and level 31 items can be quite big in terms of numbers, but strangely enough, the item level is kind of hidden. You might be thinking to yourself, Marco, what are you even talking about? I can see the item level right there. But the number that you see on the top right of every item is actually not the level that the item has. To see the actual level that the item has, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom. It will be displayed as item level or power level if you're looking at blueprints and level requirement. The level requirement is the thing that you see on the top. Now in most cases you will find that these two numbers are identical. A level 29 item will require your character to be level 29. Same for the level 28, level 27, 26 and so on. But every now and then you will find some items that are a higher level than that is required to use it. Early on in the game this doesn't really matter. It actually never really matters that much until you get to the end game where it is all about maxing out those statistics. And having full level 31 items compared to someone who only has 30, well there's gonna be quite a difference. Of course, all the items will still fall within a certain range, so it's not guaranteed that a level 31 item is better. But looking at these electronic gear mods blueprints, you will see that they are the exact same, except that the level 31 blueprint can give you higher numbers. That is of course if you're lucky enough when actually crafting them. Again, it's very possible that you still end up with a lower number. So now you might ask, how would I go about getting these level 31 items? Well, that is where the Phoenix credits come in. Phoenix credits is a type of currency that you can start collecting once you hit level 30. You can earn them by replaying the missions in challenge difficulty, uh, completing the daily challenges and killing named enemies, both inside and outside of the dark zone. Now, once you've gathered enough Phoenix credits, you can go to either one of two places. There is a vendor in the base of operations. He can be found upstairs in a tech wing right next to the recalibration station. And there is a Phoenix vendor in the most north safe house in the dark zone. Pretty much every high-end weapon, gear piece or blueprint that they sell is level 31, but that doesn't count for all the other vendors in the game. For example, all the other Dark Zone vendors sell items for Dark Zone funds. So you might be thinking, why would I waste Phoenix credits if I can also buy it with Dark Zone funds? But the thing is, those items are only level 30. Now if you don't have the Phoenix credits, there are also some other ways to get level 31 items. For example, the advanced weapon vendor in the security wing in the base of operations will also sell you a couple of level 31 items. But the stock is very limited, then you need an insane amount of cash to actually buy them. Additionally, you can also keep killing the level 31 and 32 enemies in the dark zone. They will sometimes also drop those level 31 items. But the thing is though, that the chances of them actually dropping a high-end level 31 item is very rare. And then you also have to get lucky enough that it has all the attributes and all the bonuses that you want, and that chance is just almost non-existent. Now, you can increase the odds a bit by going over to the recalibration station and modifying some older items that you don't really care about to have the scavenger bonus. If you do this, for example, to your mask and to your knee pads, the odds of you getting some better gear is a bit bigger, but it's still not guaranteed that you're gonna get a lot of high-end weapons. So, how would I go about trying to max out my character? How would I get the best items in the game in the shortest amount of time while spending the least amount of resources? What is the strategy to go to? So here's what I came up with. First and foremost, you have to get Phoenix credits. There is no way around this. The easiest way to get this is to roam around in the dark zone with a group of four players going from landmark to landmark and try to kill as many enemies as you can. Not only do you need rank 30 in the dark zone to buy most of the items, but also, as I said earlier, the named enemies drop Phoenix credits. Most of the time they drop like 5, 7 or 10 or maybe even 15. And just going from place to place will give you the most Phoenix credits the fastest. Oh, and also make sure to include an extraction point in your routine because you may not need those purples and yellows that you find because like I said, they're not gonna be the best of the best, but crafting materials are very scarce in this game and being able to deconstruct 30 of those blue, purple or yellow gear pieces every hour or so definitely adds up. 
Now, if you do feel like doing daily challenges and stuff, that's also fine. It's not the worst way to go about it. You will still get some Phoenix credits, but it will just not go as fast as killing the NPCs in the Dark Zone. Once you've gathered a good amount of Phoenix credits, you want to spend them on blueprints at the Phoenix credits vendor in the base of operations. Only that and nothing else. Why? Well, first up, the weapons and the gear that you can buy from these Phoenix vendors are never the best of the best of the best. Basically, the weapons and gear items that they sell are a result of the vendor using the blueprints to craft something himself and then sell it to you. And since there's always a certain degree of randomness when something is crafted, chances are very big that the weapon in the shop will not be quote unquote the perfect item. It will not have the maximum amount of armor mitigation that you can get or the maximum amount of bonuses. You want to get blueprints and blueprints only. And once you start stacking up those crafting materials after a while of playing, you can use the blueprints to keep crafting the same item over and over and over again until you do get that perfect match or at least something very close to it. Now I will say that this might take you a long time, especially since some of the items have so much variables. There's literally, there's like six of them and they all have to be good. If however, you almost get the perfect match, but there's just that one thing that isn't up to your taste, uh, you can try to respec it at the recalibration station, but keep in mind that you can only do this for one bonus and after recalibrating it, you can of course recalibrate it again, but it will be for a higher price and you will not be able to change the other bonuses. Now second up, if possible, you never want to buy the blueprints from the Phoenix Fender in the Dark Zone. Blueprints that are bought inside of the Dark Zone require you to spend a couple of extra Division Tech crafting materials. And these crafting materials are, like I said, pretty rare and you can't easily farm them. If the Phoenix Vendor in the base of operation doesn't have what you're looking for, just buy some other stuff that you think you might need later down the road. You can also save your Phoenix credits and wait for a bit because the vendors refresh their stock every so many hours. So chances are big that if he doesn't have the stuff that you need right now, he will have it in just a couple of days. So now you might be wondering what to do with all those hundreds of thousands of Dark Zone funds that you stacked while farming. Are they just useless? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. I would recommend that you use your Dark Zone funds to buy high-end weapons and high-end gear pieces from the Dark Zone vendors. The reason behind this is, is that it is probably going to take you a while until you have all the blueprints from the Phoenix vendors and it's going to take you even longer to craft the perfect items. And since you don't want to waste your crafting materials on crafting level 30 high-end weapons, you might as well spend your Dark Zone funds on level 30 high-end weapons that maybe aren't as good as what you have in mind for your endgame character, but it will still increase your character stats meanwhile. And also don't forget that when you don't need the item anymore that you bought, you can still deconstruct them for some high-end crafting materials because you're gonna need a lot for those level 31 blueprints. In short, collect the Phoenix credits and then when you have enough Phoenix credits, go to the base of operations, buy the high-end blueprints there, and from that point on you want to try to craft the best possible items. Also, one last thing to note. For some reason, I cannot scroll all the way down when looking at the blueprints in the shop with a mouse and keyboard. I actually had to plug in an Xbox controller to check if the vendors were selling level 30 or level 31 items. Not that convenient if you're actually looking to buy some stuff. Massive. Please fix that. And that is pretty much my complete guide to maxing out your character. As always, I really hope it helped, I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!